Hello and welcome to the channel. The tone stack didn't cut it and uh, we didn't think it would. Uh, I gave the customer the option that if he didn't like it, he could return it and we'd, we'd swap that tone stack for him. Way too bassy. So we should end up with a much nicer sound, hopefully, and a lot more volume out of this amp. But what tone stack are we going to put in this amp? I bet most of you have been on this, this website before. This is monsterpartyhat.co and this page on amplifier tone stacks we've got here. If we look, if you've not been on this before then it's quite an easy website to find. If you just type tone stacks in Google this usually comes up at the top of the, the searches. So we only want a basic tone control on here. There's lots of tone stacks. And you can see if we go through right down to the uh, back sandal on there. We've got uh, the Fender Marshall and Vox, the old classic there that's in a lot of amps. A Dumble one there. Blonde twin there, you can see. There's just another bass and treble, Fender Pro uh, 65 there, 67 tone stack, got Fender Brown face that one. Then there's the 18 watt Marshall tone stack. But this one is what interested me, this Garnet one. So this has been used on the AXH4 BBS, lifted from an old Garnet amp. With the tone pot placed in a local feedback loop, it should have a wide range of control. It's also a low insertion loss. And someone named Sean K, I don't know if anyone knows who that is, has built a variation using a rotary switch to change capacitor values. That should that must be interesting, but I don't think we're going to go that far. And the Gibson GR thirty RVT also uses this tone control on both of its channels. So this looks like a useful tone stack for uh, Harry the Hagstrom. So let's have a look and just see what what we need. So this this is going to be put after the first stage between the first and second stages. Remember, in this amp, we've only got one preamp tube. So we've got our coupling cap coming out of there as normal. So we've got a one microfarad here fastened to the cathode, and this is a, it's like a loop feedback loop. You can see here from from the plate. The, the sorry from the coupling cap from the plate should I say there we've got this one nanofarad coming down to the tone pot the wiper is to ground and then the the other side of the pot is connected to the cathode there of the first stage it's got one microfarad and one nanofarad so that's all we need just a couple of caps so I better go and look and see if we've got those in stock Right, I've got this amp on the scope and I just wanted to see what this amp was kicking out. Remember this amp's push-pull. So we are getting from this amp clean 7.32 watts. The reason for that is I want to see what we get when we put the tone stack back in. So that, that's what we're getting out of this amp. 7.32 watts. Right. So... I put that garnet tone stack in and it was garbage, didn't like it, didn't work properly. So I've taken it out and we've gone for the 5F2A, um, the old favourite, and uh, this amp sounds superb now. I've had to put a 220k grid stopper going into the second stage, just seen to have, we'd got some oscillation uh, once we'd removed that tone stack. So I've now uh, I've put that in there and that stabilised things now and this amp's really nice. Had it on the scope, we've got nine point 
9.1 watts we're getting out of this amp now we're getting 7 72 something like that before 7.2 so it's obviously it is you can tell it's much louder it's much much louder and it sounds much much better we've got rid of all the bass the 22 nanofarad cap there that we had for um coming off the first stage from the plate uh, into the volume i've dropped that to 10 nanofarad i've already dropped the remember these in the last video the coupling caps to the output tube were 100 nanofarad and i've dropped those down to 10 the bypass capacitor on the uh, cathode resistor across the cathode resistor was 200 microfarad i've now dropped that down to 22 microfarad but although we had done that before so this amp now we've really reduced it a lot of the components to get rid of the base it had a horrible but and it's still got plenty of base so this it does sounds sounds awesome so what we're going to do now is I'm going to pop it back in its case I've checked it on the scope again and there's no just to make sure we've got no oscillation anywhere we haven't so what we're going to do now is going to pop it back in the case and we are going to have a listen right we've got this Hagstra on the 4B12 <laughs> sounds much better
Tone stack was just over engineered, designed for bass really, but that just sounds awesome. Let's try another guitar through it.
scope on there we've got rid of a lot of the bass now we've got some bass but it's not overpowering this amps loads loads louder than it was before it's alive it, it sounds fantastic when it's cranked it, it overdrives beautifully it's just an awesome bit of kit so that'll do it for this one so thankfully we've got this one sorted out so thanks for watching and uh, you all take care and I'll see you all in the next video bye bye for now mm -hmm.